Yeah, nice to meet you all. Hard to top that, hard to top that, buddy. I don't have a video. I came in person. So, I'll try and keep this short, because I'm conscious that even though I'd love being the centre of attention, you know, as I'm sure you've all noticed, I don't want to draw attention away from the happy couple a second longer than I need to. To be honest, being a teacher, I'm not used to speaking to this many people. At least not for free. <laughs> I'd like to make a few special thanks. Thanks to everyone for coming. Some people from as far as London, Haslingdon, right. and the exotic lands of Bay Cup. <laughs> I'd especially like to thank those who made it all the way back from Prague. The Scooter Gang. <laughs> Glad to see Jack is no longer limping. Callum's concussion has finally worn off. I'd like to say thanks to Eddie for inviting me, and thanks to Lauren for reminding him to do so. <laughs> Some guests have even come all the way from China. Ooh. To be honest, I bet they didn't consider the cost of a round trip to the UK with a brief stop off in Prague when they said yes to being the best man. <laughs> and they definitely can't tell their girlfriend the true cost of this trip. So at the end of the speech, I'll be coming around for donations <laughs> to return <the> flight. <laughs> But in all seriousness, this is the big day none of us could miss in a million years. The day Eddie Cod becomes legally somebody else's problem. <laughs> Look at the Cod family. Sarah, Charlie, welling up to see their baby boy flying the nest, leaving home, spreading his wings. One down, five to go, eh, Charlie? <laughs> This is the same son, known in Baker as a local legend. Everybody wanted to party with Eddie. Eddie Cod. Without exception. This culminated in what is now known as the party. <laughs> the party. Now some of what happened at the party should rightly be left to fade into legend and Baker myth. But imagine if you will. Eddie's family home. Four floors filled with musical instruments, children's toys, and now stuffed with what felt like over a hundred people. Some Eddie knew, some not so much. It seemed like such a good idea, such a good idea at the time. In fact, it's probably the best idea Eddie's ever had. At least that's how it felt when we were doing tequila body shots out of people's belly buttons. But slowly the crushing, soul-destroying realizations slowly seeped through as the hangover set in. People frantically tidying up garbage bags, trying to figure out, how did the doors get broken? <laughs> Can you buy a door from being cute? How do you get body paint off of a wall? <laughs> but Eddie seemed calm, waking up from his slumber, and seeing what he'd done. <laughs> Eddie kept a cool head. No need to panic. He had a plan. Two days later, his dad found him hiding at Chris's house, <laughs> avoiding the situation for the time. <laughs> the moral of this story is that for Charlie and Sarah, this is a big day. <laughs> it's win-win. It seems that Lauren has straightened Eddie out. And if not, at the very least, next time he can destroy his own home. <laughs> I've known Eddie and Lauren for what seems like forever. All the way back to BRGS, where me and Eddie started our JD and Turk level bromance. Yeah, just touch it here. I felt like Eddie was my little brother. I was going to take Eddie under my wing and look after him. We were together through all the best moments of growing up, through the awkward years of puberty and into manhood, some of us. <laughs> As we slowly grew up, probably a bit slower than we should have done, to be fair, but we made it. And looking back on our friendship, it turns out that Eddie, the student became the master. You know, you taught me way more than I ever taught you. And thanks for everything, buddy. Everything. <laughs> For example, right, Eddie likes to read. He's always been recommending books to me since I met him. 
surprising, I know. <laughs> the one that made the biggest impact on me was Yes Man. Should it be Yes Man? Yes. Yes. Should. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In our misguided youth, we would take every opportunity presented to us, no matter how life-threatening or financially destructive it might be. We would say yes to everything. This, in all honesty, mainly led to a collection of overly drunken escapades across the northwest of England. <laughs> One of the more family-friendly examples of our Yes Man antics was in Tenerife. Standing on a beach, having already lost our companions hours earlier, still trying to avoid the bouncers from what, which were chasing us from events earlier in the night. I don't know who asked who, but someone suggested we take off all of our clothes, <laughs> Which now I come to think of it is how most of our adventures started. <laughs> but anyway, we took off most of our clothes and we were supposed to swim into the ocean. Obviously, as I'm sure you guessed, we said yes. <laughs> we proceeded to swim and swim, swim and swim into the darkness, further and further from the shore, until we could barely see the shoreline. It didn't strike us until about then that people have constantly told us don't get drunk, swim into the sea, <laughs> at night. <sighs> so the panic set in and we began the exhausting swim back to shore. I mention this story only to highlight how Eddie has changed for the better. I'm not saying he wouldn't do it again, <laughs> with the drop of a hat, but at least now he has to ask Lauren first. <laughs> In a normal best man speech, I think I'm supposed to tell the groom the secret to a happy marriage is Lauren is always right. I feel this advice is a bit redundant with Eddie, because without Lauren, Eddie would literally be lost. Game alone, ask him anything, and more than often the response will be, Where's Lauren? If you've ever seen Eddie away from Lauren's side for more than a few minutes, out and about or on a night out, most people have a designated driver. Eddie immediately assigns someone to the role of designated Lauren. <laughs> Only the other day, given a to-do list, Eddie was thwarted almost immediately by the inability to find trousers. <laughs> his first instinct was to ask me. Because earlier that day, I found his phone and thus been assigned designated Lauren. The man had checked everywhere, the floor, the bed, the living room, everywhere. So my advice was, of course, call Lauren. <laughs> Obviously. On calling Lauren, the answer seemed to be mind-blowing, life-changing information to Eddie. He looked in the wardrobe. <laughs> but what can I say about Lauren that she's literally a lifesaver? I don't have any brothers or sisters. You know, a concept to the Cod family a bit strange, I know. But I've always considered Eddie my brother. And now I couldn't possibly imagine a sweeter, kinder or more perfect lady to consider my new sister. <laughs> I've already gone on too long and I'm sure you're all eager to get on with it, but I'll leave you with one last thought. The thing I learned from Eddie in his Yes Man book was that yes is the most powerful word, especially when you have the option to say no. Today we're all here to see Eddie and Lauren take the opportunity presented to them both of a long, happy life together forever. And anyone who knows them has absolutely no doubt that they would say yes. And in keeping with tradition, this Yes Man adventure is of course going to start with a messy night in the field, a hangover, and then with one hell of a story. So please join me in a toast to the happy couple and the start of their story.